Standby for manual transmission in 3, 2, 1. Greetings, mercenaries, mech warriors, and the merely curious. Manus Dextra here with another episode of my less nonsense guide to Battletech. So, Karen, why don't you uh, do a recap of the last episode for the folks at home? Sure, Manus. There's really not too much to say. On your first day as a member of the Arano Family Royal Guard, you allowed your sovereign and your mentor to be killed, and you only survived by ejecting from your mech like a little bitch. Hey now, my mech was sabotaged. It was completely disabled. Well, the ejection system worked fine. I mean, just look. Wow, you must have been really scared to execute a premature eject elation like that. Yeah, Karen, that's not how ejection pods work. And they're totally isolated from all other mech systems, so... Hum, you sure do seem to be an expert on ejection systems. Too bad you don't know so much about royal guarding. You might still have an employer who isn't dead and, you know, a job. <sighs> you know, Karen, thanks for your help, but uh, I think I can uh, take things from here. Are you sure? I know how much your little Power Rangers thing means to you. Oh yeah, Karen. I'm sure. Say hi to Larry for me. Dun 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 In this video, we'll continue from where we left off with the story. I'll show you how to do the first campaign mission without getting Decker killed, and I'll show you how to train your lance mates and refit your starting lance to be much more effective. Check the description for timestamps to the various sections of the video, and while you're there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Big Stompy Robot content. It only takes a moment, but it really helps out. As of late July 2022, we have just broken the 2K mark for subscribers, and that's great and all, but that means we still need another 998,000 more subs to meet my goal of 1 million subscribers by the end of the year. Now that's only 249,500 subs per month between now and December. So make it happen, people. Easy there, Manus. You took a nasty crack on the head when you punched out. Like a little bitch. Don't worry. You're safe now. My name is Darius Oliveira, and I'm XO of Markham's Marauders. We're a mercenary outfit with ties to House Arano. We did some work for High Lord Tiamati way back when. I'd introduce you to Commander Markham, but uh, he was on a supply run in the Market District when the bombs fell. He, uh, well, he didn't make it. And if it wasn't for your company, uh, sounds like I'd be dead too. Yeah, that's probably true, but don't mention it. After uh, seeing what happened to Markham, it didn't feel right leaving you in the hands of this new directorate. When we picked up your broadcast on the emergency band, we knew what we had to do. What about Mastiff? Sir Raju Montgomery, did you find him? Yeah, we found his mech. It was completely cored out. Nobody survives a hit like that. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. We supported the Royal Guard on a handful of deployments, and Sir Raju earned my respect many times over. His death is a loss for us all. Were you able to recover my blackjack? Yeah, our mech tech hauled what's left of it into the mech bay. It isn't pretty, but if you give him enough time, Yang can fix just about anything. Try not to take the loss too hard. Yang said your mech shows signs of deliberate sabotage. Whoever you had working on it really did a number on the reactor. Punching out was the right move. Ha! Huh, I know, right? So, what happens now? Well, 
Things aren't looking so hot around here with that coup and all. House Espinosa's directorate is the new de facto government of the Oregon Reach. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but Lady Urano is dead. Her dropship was destroyed on takeoff. It's all over the news. <sighs> well, shit. Yeah, our sentiments exactly. We're getting the hell out of Oregon territory. I've already booked transport on the first jump ship out. We're heading to a nice, quiet stretch of independent space all the way across the frontier on the Canopian border. It's not a cheap trip, but we'll worry about how we're going to pay for it later. As for you, well, uh, you got a few options. According to your blood chit, you've got family out in the Torian Concordat. If you want, I could look into booking you transport on a freighter bound for Torian space. Can't make any promises, but I'm willing to try. Yeah, that's all ancient history, and uh, besides, I'm broke. What's option B? Well, you could stay with us for the long haul. When we get where we're going, we can drop you at the nearest planet. Maybe you could uh, find a place for yourself there. Of course, I'd need you to pitch in for your share of fuel, plus food, lodging, and repairs to your mech. That might be tough if you're strapped for cash. Alternatively, you could find a place for yourself in the Marauders if you wanted to. Wouldn't take you too long to work off your debt, and you ran with Mastiff, so I know you've got the chops. Anyway, you could think it over, sleep on it, you've had one hell of a day, and we got a long road ahead of us. Command interface initiated. The Independent Prospectors League thanks you for your assistance, Commander. We're miners, not soldiers. We can't fight these bastards off on our own. Yeah, that's what you're paying us for. Don't worry, we'll get your platforms back. This isn't just about reclaiming what's ours. Majesty Metals killed hundreds of us when they tried to jump our claim. We want you to make them bleed for what they've done here. Commander, the Op 4 is holding two of IPL's mining platforms. The first, designated Alpha, is where they're keeping their turret generator. Move in fast and take it out. Those turrets hit hard, so you'll want to neutralize them ASAP. Platform Bravo is the site of the Op 4's corporate security tower. Engage and destroy it. They bring in a mech to protect it, take that out too. Then circle on back and we'll collect our pay. That's right, I'm ready and waiting to authorize the transfer. Now go on, Commander. Hit those corporate pigs where it hurts. We'll be watching the action from here. Okay, so this is going to be the walkthrough for the first campaign mission three years later. So I think the way we're going to do these is with minimal commentary, but I will highlight and explain key points in the mission. For this mission, our main goal is just to eliminate the Op 4 and do so without getting our scout, Decker, killed. The first few times I played this mission way back when, that seemed impossible. It's actually not hard at all once you understand how to play a scout mech, but we'll get there. So you can sit back and watch the whole thing, or you can skip to specific highlights. Position confirmed.
trespassing on Majesty Metals and Manufacturing Property and acting in collusion with a domestic terrorist organization. Cease your advance immediately, or you will be fired upon. Affirmative. On my way. The spider decker is in right now is woefully undergunned and underarmored, and it will not survive more than one good hit from anything with decent weapons. The trick to not getting hit is to keep moving and stay in cover, like I'm trying to do here. Waiting for orders. The next thing to do is not get distracted by the mechs here. There are like six turrets in the area, and we need to get them offline before they start firing. So take out the turret generator first. After that, it's pretty easy to take down the two half-armored light mechs. We'll just focus fire on them one at a time whenever possible. Locked on target. I'm taking heavy hits, Commander. Waiting for orders. Acknowledged. Standing by. On the move.
detected. Waiting on you, Commander. Don't need to tell me twice. Roger that. Target's taking a critical hit. Got a sensor trace! I hear ya. I read you, Commander. Moving out. Standing by. Moving to position. Engaging target. Taking heavy hits, Commander. Ready for orders. On my way. Targeting for physical attack.
opponent. Ready for orders. Target's taken a critical hit. What can I do for you? Coordinates received. Roger that! Firing on target! Receiving you. Position confirmed. Okay, so let's talk about headshots for a minute. Lethal headshots are great because they usually guarantee a fully salvageable mech at the end of a mission. These can happen as the result of a called shot, like I'm attempting now. Or they can happen as the result of a lucky roll. Like this. Uh -huh. And stay down! And just so you know, the enemy can also benefit from lucky rolls too. In this game, Battlefields are dangerous, and anyone except your company commander can be killed like that at any time. It's one of the things that makes this game fun and interesting, unless you aren't prepared for it. And this is why you need to build a strong bench. Waiting for orders. On it.
I hear ya. On my way. Shooting the little guys. Waiting for orders. Good to go. On it. All weapons are go. Reporting. Vehicle destroyed. You betcha. Coordinates received. Moving to position. out. Roger that. Uh-huh. Brilliant work, Commander. We should have no trouble mopping up the other platforms now that their defenses are down. Yeah, we get the job done. Speaking of which... Well, I wasn't finished. These platforms won't do us much good if we can't hold them. Majesty's medals taught us that. So we're going to need your battle mechs. <sighs> You're going to want to reconsider that. Oh yeah? Why? Your lance has already been target locked by our turrets. Now power down and surrender and we'll let you walk. Or try to fight and we'll tear you to shreds. Your call. Well, there goes our goddamn payday. Hold tight, Commander. We're on our way. Ah, uh, curse his sudden but inevitable betrayal. But, uh, yeah, we already know how to deal with turrets, so just target the generator and then take out the crawlers. Acknowledged. Commander?
Target acquired. Waiting on you, Commander. You betcha! Tell me what to shoot! Bye-bye! Good to go. Copy that. Reporting. One left vehicle. Yes, Commander. Roger that. Stand by for extraction, Commander. Let's get the hell out of here. Oh, and Darius? I know, Meyer. I know. You want another team meeting. Give the man a prize. Mission successful. You need to start finding us better clients, Darius. I mean it. We've been slumming it on the ass end of the frontier for three years now, and we're drowning in debt. I'm fully aware of our financial situation, Meyer, but we can't just conjure new clients out of thin air. Manus, do me a solid and back me up on this. Yeah, if we're really that hard up for cash, we need to stop talking and start doing something about it.
Hey, you'll hear no arguments from me. When we made you our commander, we all agreed to follow your lead. Darius, could you walk us through the details of this trouble we're in? It might help if you broke things down point by point. Sure thing, Yang. Point one, Meyer's right. We're in debt. Every sea bill we make technically belongs to the banks. Point two, this corner of the frontier is a dead zone for mercenary work. There are clients, but they're terrible. And that's just a fact. And that's it. There are no other points. Okay, so we're in a bad spot. What are we going to do about it? I don't see what else we can do, Manus. I'm already serving up every legitimate contract I can find. Unless you want me to sidestep the Mercenary Review Board entirely, we're basically out of options. Go around the MRB? No thanks. Taking an uncertified job is a great way to wind up with a knife in your back. Huh. We just got betrayed by a board-certified contract, Yang. How much worse could it get? Plenty. What happened down there was an exception, boss. With uncertified jobs, it's the rule. Remind me again why we don't just skip town and head to a nicer corner of the periphery? Because the banks and the jump ship crews have an arrangement. Until we pay up, they're going to keep us on a short leash. Yeah, that's a good reason. So, look, Darius, Meyer's right. We need to start earning some real money, and we need to do it soon. It's only a matter of time before something breaks down that I can't fix with duct tape and good intentions. <sighs> At the end of the day, I'd rather go down fighting than wind up broke. Well, it's your call, Manus. I'll start digging for contracts outside the MRB system. Who knows, maybe we'll get lucky. It isn't like we've got much left to lose. In the meantime, we'll need to find another paying job and our prospects in this system have completely dried up. I'd recommend booking travel to a neighboring system and seeing what the review board has for us. With any luck, we'll find enough work to keep going until something better rolls in. The banks are holding our jump ship access hostage until we repay our debts. For now, we can only go between Urkren and the nearby systems of Alloway, Bellerophon, and Detroit. Our top priority right now needs to be finding work so we can raise cash. None of the contracts here are very good. I picked out the only viable one I could find, and it helpfully includes our travel fees as part of the deal. Come by the command center when you're ready to review it. The mission Darius mentioned is in Bellerophon, and it will take us about 12 days to get there. And we need to use that time to get our company in proper order. That means we need to visit the barracks and the mech bay before we accept the mission. Here's where the campaign really starts, and the first thing we need to do is get our mech warriors lined out. Starting out, we have four mech warriors and our company commander. This will not be enough to cover injuries, so we need to add at least two more. My advice is to just take the two best available pilots from the local hiring hall and start them in the drop rotation ASAP. New mech warriors available. Ready for orders. Next, we need to distribute the XP we just earned from the last drop. Behemoth is our first outrider. This means when she's fully trained, her two primary skills will be bulwark and sure footing. These will give her defensive buffs in almost any situation, and her specialized skill will be ace pilot, which grants the ability to move after firing weapons. This is a huge advantage for brawlers and flankers. But we don't want to neglect any of the four general skill sets either. 
So we'll go ahead and give her another point in tactics for now and save the rest of her points for later. Next, we'll train our commander. He's going to be a lancer when fully trained. That's bulwark and multi-shot for primary skills and breaching shot for a specialized skill. And his primary role in the lance will be fire support. This round, we'll go ahead and take the bulwark skill and spend a few points to get his piloting and tactics up as well. Mech warrior training complete. Standing by. So if we can keep Decker alive, he'll be one of our recon pilots. That means his primary skills will be sensor lock and sure footing with ace pilot as his specialized skill. For this round, we'll buy sensor lock and bank the rest of his points for future use. Training confirmed, Commander. Good to go. Glitch is going to be our second Lancer. She already has multi-shot for a primary skill, so we'll buy her another point of guts on the way to the Bulwark skill. Training complete. Good to go. Yep. The only other mech warrior with XP to spend is Medusa, and I usually make him a recon pilot, but I don't want to commit to that just yet. So for now, we'll buy him one more point in guts since mech warriors always need guts, and we'll see how things develop. Mech warrior training complete. Receiving you. On to the mech bay. So the first thing to know about outfitting is that stock mech loadouts are always bad. There's usually too many jump jets, not enough armor, and a combination of weapon systems that just don't work together. Unfortunately, we won't have the time or the parts to refit all four mechs at once, so we'll start with the blackjack. First, we want to move the AC2 ammo out of the torso. Ammo is prone to explode, so we don't want it anywhere near the torso as these explosions will always result in pilot injuries even if you don't lose the entire mech. So when possible, put ammo in the legs. The next thing we need to do is remove all the jump jets. The blackjack is primarily long range fire support. It doesn't really need them and the extra tonnage is better used for more armor and different weapons. We'll also remove the three medium lasers and replace them with a large laser. This gives us slightly less firepower overall, but more firepower at long range. Also, fewer weapons means less heat load. So we can actually remove one heat sink and add an additional ton of armor. This refit will only take eight days, so we have time to do another. Logged and noted. Shouldn't be too hard. So let's take a look at the spider. The spider has way too many jump jets and too little armor and not enough guns. We'll strip off all but two of the jump jets, and this will free up about three tons. We'll use one ton to add two small lasers and then we'll add two tons of armor to the mech's torso and legs.
New weapon systems available. Together, these two refits will take about 17 days, and that's not too bad since we already have 12 days of downtime due to travel anyway. The Shadowhawk and the Vindicator are going to take a bit longer to refit, so we'll have to do that after we've earned a bit of money on the next drop. So now, all we need to do is go back and accept the mission and start time running. I usually try to bump salvage up to three picks whenever possible. Remember, it takes three pieces to salvage a full mech. Calculating course now, Commander. Engines prime. All hands from hand will transition to thrust gravity. Docking sequence commencing. A few moments later. Acknowledged. Tango down. Mission successful. So, as expected, that drop was a milk run and we managed to make about 100,000 sea bills in cash and score a bit of salvage. Now it's time to go back to the mech bay and refit our last two mechs. I think the Vindicator works much better as a brawler, so we're going to load it up with medium lasers and armor. This build isn't optimal, since my choice of weapons is limited, but this does work well enough for now. We'll drop some armor and upgrade the SRMs as soon as possible. Logged and noted. Shouldn't be too hard. The Shadowhawk works better as fire support, so we're going to lose the medium laser in the SRMs. We'll add an additional LRM-10 and a ton of ammo. This will leave us with the AC-5 for sniping and the equivalent of an LRM-15 for indirect fire support. Together, these refits will take about a month, so we might as well travel to a new system while we wait.
So I think that will do it for this episode. In the next one, we'll test out these builds as we do the next campaign mission for a mysterious benefactor. But until then... You will now be released from manual control. Mr. Dextra thanks you for your cooperation. You will now be released from manual control. Mr. Dextra thanks you for your cooperation. You will now be released from manual control. Mr. Dextra thanks you for your cooperation.